is running. He's running out. Your goodness is running. He's running out. With my life, with my life later, I surrender. I give you everything. Your goodness is running. This morning, your favor, your favor, this morning, your mercy, your mercy, this morning, your grace, your grace, this morning, your grace, your grace. Running after, with my life, with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running, running after. Your goodness is running. Your goodness is running. With our hands lifted, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I, with every breath that I am, I will sing, I will sing of a good, of a good. For there's no shadow you will light up Mountain you will climb Coming after me There's no wall you will keep down I will see Coming after me There's no shadow Just the wall you won't kick down. Lie you will see coming after me. Oh, the oh, the oh. Never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases, fights till I'm tough, leaves the night. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself. Oh, the over. Never end. Reckless love. No shadow you will lie. Mountain you won't. Coming after. Oh 
time in Dominion City and now it's Ikeja you know all the way for US and Argentina give him a big big God bless him wow God bless you let's give Jesus 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 give him a glory give him honor give him a big hand of praise to the Lord
us. Thank you because when we couldn't find you on our own, you came to seek that which was lost. Thank you because you chose us. Thank you because you revealed yourself to us. Thank you for saving us, for redeeming us, for cleansing us. Thank you for coming into this world looking for us. Thank you for giving yourself away. There is no greater love than your love. There's no greater sacrifice than your sacrifice. And thank you because even tonight, you continue to pursue us with your love. You continue to pursue us with your word. And you continue to give yourself away by your spirit. We open our hearts to you, Jesus. And we give ourselves away to you tonight. We love you, Lord. And we're here because we love you. Let's give him a big hand of praise. And let's have a seat tonight. Wow. What an atmosphere in this place. What an atmosphere of the glory of God. How many of you were at the stadium last night? Oh, I was so blessed to see what God is doing in Nigeria. The world needs to see the great revival that God is sending to this nation. If I go to the U.S. and I tell them it was 5 o'clock in the morning and the stadium was full of people worshiping Jesus, they're not going to believe me. <laughs> so much passion. And we were talking with Pastor Steve on the way home. He said, we need to see this in the United States. We need to see this revival also in America. God has, is pouring and doing something so special in your midst. And I want you to know that God has blessed you with a tremendous pastor. And I want to honor Pastor David. And truly, truly, the Lord has blessed you with a pastor with a heart after God's own heart. That's what I can say about Pastor David. Just getting to get to know him and his heart and his love for the Lord and his love for the church and his love for this nation. It just moves me to see men that are being raised in these last days to carry the work of Jesus on this earth. So let's give the Lord a hand for his life and his wife and his family, his faithfulness to the Lord. Talking with him, I felt we have so many things in common, you know. So many things in common. But most of all, we both love Jesus Christ with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, and with all of our strength. And I think that's what the Lord desires the most from each one of us, to love Him first and above all others. Amen? I was impressed last night by the, wor the worship of the Nigerian church. You know, God has given... <laughs> One of, the, one of the joys that the Lord has given me in traveling around the world, being in over 50 different nations, is to see the multifaceted bride of Jesus and how he's given gifts and talents to different uh, uh, nations and to different uh, manifestations of his church on the earth. And last night I was there and I didn't want to go home. <laughs> I wanted to stay there all night. Well, we, we did stay all night, you know, worshiping Jesus with all of you. Because I felt his pleasure in our midst. I felt him rejoicing in the midst of us. I, and, and when you experience that, and you experience his glory, and you experience the pleasure in his presence there's fullness of joy and pleasure and you begin to experience that you're like where else are we gonna go I don't want to go anywhere else I want to be right here in his presence so uh, 
I was just so overwhelmed with his presence last night. At one point, I was like, I don't know where I am. I don't know what time it is, but I want to be here. There's no other place I'd rather be than in his presence. How many say amen? amen. Yes, yes, yes. You know, um, I want to ask the church here in Nigeria to pray for us too. The body of Christ has different ministries and they're all for the edification of the church. The Lord has called us into the evangelistic ministry and it is our heart to edify the church, to work with the church and to edify the church and the body of Christ. And uh, we have a vision to go to a different nation every month. So every month the Lord's opened doors to do events in different nations. And one thing that's something very special that the Lord has given us is He's allowed us to go to every continent. He's allowed us to go to Asia, uh, uh, South America, Central America, I mean North America, Australia, everywhere. The Lord has opened the doors for us to go and take His good news, His gospel. But we need the church to stand with us in prayer. We are a body and each one of us has a different function, amen? But we all work together for the glory of Jesus. So I want to invite you to pray for us. If you want to follow what the Lord is doing through the ministry in different nations, you can visit the website holyspirit.tv and right there we post short little videos of what do, God's doing in different countries and we also have a whole series of teachings for free on the Holy Spirit. There's no way I could teach everything about the Holy Spirit in three days but if there's a desire in your heart to get to know the Holy Spirit more intimately, to have a deeper relationship and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and you want the Holy Spirit to work in and through your life, we did this series from Israel. We went to different locations where God manifested His glory when He walked on earth, and we share all these teachings there. You can receive them for free. Last night I spoke about the kingdom, and when they invited me to come to Dominion Church, I went to the website and I saw pastor's theme for this year was the kingdom and the glory. Amen? The kingdom and the glory. So tomorrow I'm going to be speaking about the glory. Because the glory is the most intimate manifestation of the Spirit. The kingdom is a manifestation of the Spirit where everybody can experience it. Everybody that was in the stadium last night cannot say that they were not touched by the kingdom of heaven, that they not felt his presence in that place. But the glory is only for those who are willing to seek him. Amen. He manifests his kingdom when he seeks you. He manifests his glory when you seek him. So tomorrow we're going to go deeper into the manifestations of the spirit. As we know, the Holy Spirit is a person. And He manifests Himself in many different ways. One of those ways is His kingdom, then His power, and then His glory. They're different manifestations. I want to show you a short video clip before I go into the Word. Because I like to show what God is doing in different nations so that you will see and be encouraged. Because sometimes you watch the news and all you see is bad news. It's like the news is the, <laughs> is the, is the preacher of the devil. <laughs> They preach you bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, killing. I mean, you hear the news about Nigeria and you, you think this is not to come because there's killings. And then you come here and this is the most wonderful place on earth. You know? <laughs> there is peace, there is joy, there is freedom, there is love. Same thing, you, you want to go to Israel and they put you all this bad news about terrorism and killings and, and, and destruction. And you go to Israel and there's peace. So, it's important for you to also see what God is doing around the world. Because when the enemy is killing, stealing, and destroying, Jesus is saving, healing, delivering, restoring, blessing, prospering. We are carriers of good news. So I want to show you a short video clip from Mexico. We were in the southern part of Mexico. This is a place where a few years ago there was persecution against Christians. If you are a Christian, they will kill you. They will go into churches and kill Christians. But now there's a great revival that God is sending there. And this year, hopefully, we're going to be also doing another crusade there, an open-air crusade, because there's so much hunger and expectancy for what God is doing. So we're going to take a little trip from Lagos, Nigeria. We're going to go all the way to the southern part of Mexico, Chiapas, Mexico. In the bottom, you're going to read the translation, because here I'm preaching in Spanish. But let's see if we can see it. Let's go.
hay un solo camino para ser libre del pecado es a través de la sangre de Jesucristo no hay otro camino lo único que te puede limpiar de todo pecado lo único que te puede hacer libre de todo pecado es la sangre de Jesucristo Decirle que me siga, que me siga. Ciega de los dos ojos y está viendo. Si tú anhelas ser lleno del Espíritu Santo, el primer paso es el arrepentimiento. ¿Qué significa el arrepentimiento? Es cuando tú sientes esa convicción de pecado, tú tomas una decisión de cambiar tu forma de vivir es una decisión personal que tú tomas de abandonar el pecado de dejar tus malos caminos y tomar una decisión de seguir a Jesucristo y decir Jesús yo quiero ser tu discípulo yo anhelo más tu presencia que lo que este mundo me pueda ofrecer yo anhelo más cumplir tu propósito que satisfacer los deseos de mi carne y tú tomas una decisión de morir a ti mismo para vivir para Dios traía un tumor en la cabeza antes de venir traía un tumor y fue lleno del Espíritu Santo ahorita no más se desapareció hace dos años no hace oía hace dos años no oía en ninguno de los dos en oídos de los dos y ahora está escuchando ahora por los dos oídos Jesús Jesús Jesús, Jesús. Ya se fue ese dolor Totalmente Y hoy dice que ella sintió un fuego en sus rodillas y en todo su cuerpo Y ahorita ella puede moverse A ver, mueva la rodilla Mire, dele un aplauso a Jesucristo Tengo 35 años de su vida Y ahorita no me duele Mire Dé la vuelta para aquí 35 años, hacedor de milagros es Jesús. Que hoy la trajeron cargando entre dos personas, no podía ni caminar. Ya puede caminar, está sana. Los sordos escuchan, los ciegos ven, los paralíticos caminan. El reino de los cielos se ha acercado. El reino de los cielos se ha acercado. El cual nos ha liberado de la potestad de las tinieblas y trasladado al reino de su amado Hijo, en quien tenemos redención por su sangre, el perdón de pecados. Solamente por su sangre, por la sangre que Jesucristo vertió en la cruz por nosotros. Nosotros recibimos redención, libertad del pecado, del reino de las tinieblas y somos trasladados al reino de su Hijo amado Jesucristo.
different sources of energy and how energy is so important to our everyday life. We've come to be so dependent on energy. Imagine your life without electricity. Imagine your life without gasoline. Not you being able to charge your phone, not even to have lights, not even to drive a car. We human beings are dependent on external sources of energy to be effective. And because of those energy, those power, that energy, we're able to do so much more than we used to before because now we're blessed with all these different sources of energy. In the U.S. right now, the big thing is electric cars how we can have electric cars and how the future is electric cars because it's a different and alternate source of energy when it comes to your spiritual life you also need power and energy to be effective you cannot do it with your own power if you think you can do it with your own energy, your own power is kind of like you saying, I'm not going to use electricity, I'm not going to use gasoline, I'm going to live in this world without any source of external energy. How difficult would that be to survive? In the same way, in our Christian walk, we cannot do it, we cannot be effective, we cannot fulfill God's purpose and plan for our lives without a source of power that comes from the Holy Spirit. You need this power to live a holy life. You cannot overcome temptation and sin fighting with your own strength. You will continually fail. You need this power to be a witness of Jesus. You cannot testify of Jesus to others in your own wisdom, your own knowledge. You cannot convert people. You cannot convince people of sin. All you're going to do is get into arguments. You need power, Jesus said, to be his witness. You need power to cast out demons. You need power to pray for the sick. You need power to extend the, uh, the kingdom of heaven upon this earth. Jesus did not leave his church powerless. He did not just leave us with knowledge. He did not just leave us with truth. He also left power for our lives. And that power comes from the Holy Spirit. If you have the Bible, we're going to open it. I'm going to read from the book of Luke. Chapter 3, verse 21. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Look for one, it says, Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. In verse 14, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And news of him went out through all the surrounding region. And in verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In chapter 6, verse 19, he reads, And the whole multitude sought to touch Him, for power went out from him and healed them all. You know, there's many men and women throughout history that I admire, that I learn from, that I look up from, I look up to. For example, I love Catherine Kuhlman. I love her life. I love the way she 
loved Jesus and she ministered the presence of God and how she ministered to the sick. That's why I even named my daughter Catherine after her. <laughs> and uh, I love, for example, William Seymour. I don't know if you ever heard of William Seymour, but he was a tremendous man of God whom God used to bring the Pentecostal revival to the nations of the earth. And today, many of us have experienced the fullness of the Spirit thanks to the sacrifice that this man made for the glory of Jesus. I love reading his story and his love for Jesus. I love Reinhard Bonnke. How many love Reinhard Bonnke here? <laughs> man, what, a, what an example of a life well lived for Jesus. What a testimony of passion for the Lord. I love many, many. I can name you some from South America like Carlos Anaconda. You never heard of him, but it's another man that was powerfully used from the Lord. And we learn from these men and women in history and even our pastors and our leaders. And God has placed them on this earth for us to be edified, to be encouraged, to be, to be challenged in our faith. But ultimately, our desire should not be to be like Reinhardt, to be like Catherine Kuhlman or William Seymour. Our desire should always be to be like Jesus. Our desire should be to be disciples of Jesus. These men should lead us to Jesus, not to themselves. When you look at your pastor, his desire is for you to come to Jesus and our ultimate desire is to be Jesus I want to be like you I want to follow you who do you want to be like I don't want to be like some famous person I don't even want to be like my earthly father even though I love him I admire him I look up to him I learn from him my desire is Jesus I want to learn from you I want to be like you. I want to hear your words. Not only read your words, but hear your words. Obey your words. And I want to also follow your example. Follow your example. If you read about the life of Jesus, there has never been a man that walked on this earth with more power than Jesus. More anointed than Jesus. He was a man when he walked on this earth. He was fully man. He was God, but he made himself man. He had the same uh, desires that we have. He also got tired. He also had to sleep. He also had to eat. He was fully man, but he was a man full of the Spirit of God. For the first 30 years of his life, we don't read about miracles, signs, or wonders. But something happened at the age of 30 in the life of Jesus. He went to the Jordan River. And he marked an example for us to follow. An example to us if we want to live a life full of the Spirit, full of His power. He showed us the way. And the first thing he did, he's baptized in water. The baptism in water represents repentance. John the Baptist said, I baptize you in water for repentance. The baptism in water is not like a church tradition. It's not something that you do out of tradition. Baptism in water is very significant if you truly repent from your sins. There's people who've been baptized in water, but they've never repented from their sins. It's pretty much as taking a bath. It doesn't count for anything. What counts is the repentance. What Jesus was exemplifying for us is the way to the Spirit. You will not experience the fullness of the Spirit in your life unless there's a true repentance in your heart. The depth of your repentance will determine the depth of the infilling of the Spirit in your life. There's many people may come to the front, get prayed, the Holy Spirit will touch you, but He will not baptize you. And many people think because they've been touched by the Spirit, that they're filled with the Spirit, and they've never repented of their sins. You cannot be filled with the Spirit without first repenting from your sins. 
because he's called Holy Spirit. And he only comes to dwell in hearts that have been purified, sanctified, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And his blood cleanses you when you repent from your sins. The Bible says that Jesus prayed. The Bible says, if you ask, you will receive. If us being bad, we know how to give good gifts to our children. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Prayer. You must ask for the Spirit of God to fill you. And these two things open heaven upon your life. The Bible says when Jesus was baptized and he prayed, heavens were open. It's like a key to open heaven upon your life. When you willfully sin, you're opening the gates of hell upon your life. Some people say, why am I experiencing all this trauma, all this suffering? Because they live with open gates of hell in their lives. So what they experience in their life is a manifestation of the kingdom of darkness. This is very important. Very important. When you repent, those gates close. And the kingdom of darkness has no more influence over your life. Those gates shut. And when you pray, the gates of heaven open. And your life begins to be influenced, led, blessed by heaven. When before you were being influenced by the, by the forces of darkness that bring destruction, division, suffering. Now you are being experienced and being influenced by the love of God, by the goodness of God, by the favor of God, by the mercy of God. And the Bible says that the heavens opened upon Jesus. And there was an audible voice that was heard. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Whew. Another issue of the day is identity. There's an identity crisis in this generation. People don't know who they are or what they are anymore. There's so much confusion about identity, who I am. The Bible says when the Spirit comes into your heart, He gives testimony to your spirit that you are a son of God. He reveals to you your identity. Who you are, you are His. You belong to Him. You are beloved. You are chosen. And you are His son or His daughter. The Spirit of God gives you that identity. And there's nothing more beautiful than to walk on earth knowing who you are. <laughs> who cares what people say about me? I know who I am. Who cares what the enemy says about me? I know who I am. Because God has revealed it to me. The Spirit has spoken to me. I know my identity. Who cares what the world does? Where the world goes? I don't follow the waves or the ways of this world. I follow the Spirit that lives within me. One time the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, Andres, you're not only my son, you're also my warrior. And he said to me, you're not only my voice. You're also my heart. So I know who I am. I know who I am because he spoke it to me. So if other preachers criticize me, I don't mind. <laughs> I have Jesus revealed who I am to me. If people think, oh, this guy this or this guy that or he did this. Or, I know who I am. And that gives you this assurance this assurance to walk through this world, to walk with this, through this life in confidence 
Because the Holy Spirit has revealed your identity. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus, filled them, revealed his identity. But then the Bible says, the Holy Spirit led Jesus. This is where many Christians get a little confused. Because they think the Holy Spirit is just an experience. And it is an experience. When He comes, you're going to experience His fire. You're going to experience His power. You're going to experience His love. People do speak in tongues. People do get drunk in the Spirit. He comes with great, amazing glory to fill our lives. But we need to realize that the Holy Spirit is a person. He's a person. He has a will. He has emotions. He is God in us. Jesus was God with us. The Holy Spirit is God in us. The disciples followed Jesus wherever He went. Our desire is to be, I want to follow you, Holy Spirit, wherever you lead me. We must be led by the Spirit. You cannot have His power unless you're led by the Spirit first. Because He doesn't give His power to fulfill your dreams. He gives His power to fulfill His will and His dreams upon this earth. So you must submit your will to the will of the Holy Spirit. You must place yourself under His Lordship. Whatever He says, yes and amen. Yes and amen. It's pretty much kind of like a GPS. You know, in the car nowadays, we have this GPS, or even on your phone. You type an address there, boom, 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 boom. You don't know where you're going. You've never been there before. You don't know the way. But the GPS begins to talk to you. And he says, go 100 yards, take a left. Go five miles, take a right. And what do you do? You submit your life to the GPS. You obey a little machine. Whatever it tells you, you do it. And you begin to drive. Oh, take a right. You take a right. You don't know where you're going. You've never been there before. Oh, take a left. And you keep driving and driving and driving. And suddenly, he says, you have arrived to your destination. And you're looking like, wow, here it is. And somebody asks you, how did you get here? I don't know. I just follow the GPS. See, God has promises, dreams, visions for your life. He has a promised land for you. Things that eye has not seen, nor ears heard, nor has come up to the heart of men are the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit, the Bible says. As you follow the Spirit, He will lead you to His promised land for your life. He will lead you to fulfill God's dream for your life. Oh, if you knew the wonderful things that has prepared for those who love Him. But the ones who rebel is us. I don't know if it happens to you, but sometimes the GPS says, take a left, and you're like, oh, I know a shortcut. I know a better way than the GPS. I'm smarter than the GPS and you take a different route and then you get lost and you spend 30 minutes going around in circles like the children of Israel going around in circles in the desert for 40 years and the GPS keeps telling you no go this way come this way and you're like no I'm going that way I'm going that way the GPS no come this way as long as you rebel to the spirit and you don't submit to the Holy Spirit, you will never accomplish the fullness of what God has intended for your life. The Holy Spirit drew Jesus to a desert. <laughs> Many people think he drew, took him to the desert to be tempted by the devil. I believe he took him to the desert because he wanted to be alone with him. See, the Holy Spirit yearns for you. You like me? Yeah, you. He 
yearns to be with you. That's how much He loves you. He wants to be alone with you. You, you know, when, when, you're, when I was dating my wife, it was nice to be among a lot of people, but what? You want to go to a place alone where you can talk with her, you know? Because the relationship is different when you're just one-on-one -on -one with her than when you're a bunch, a bunch of friends. When you're alone, it's intimate relationship. You open your heart. She opens your heart to you. You get to know each other. The same way, it's wonderful to go to a stadium full of people worshiping Jesus. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to come to the conferences and to come to church. And we should do that. But that should never take the place of your own intimacy with the Spirit. You should have your own relationship with Him. How are you going to follow Him whom you do not know? How are you going to follow Him who you cannot hear? And you get to know that person. And you get to hear that person in your intimate time alone with Him. People don't like that. Because you know what happens when you get alone? The first, time, the first person who begins to talk to you is the devil. The first person that talked to Jesus was the devil. He was like, if you are the son of God. What the devil was telling him, you're not the son of God. You're not chosen. You're not beloved. You're not his. That's what the devil is going to try to tell you and me. He's going to try to bring condemnation and guilt and shame into our lives. That's why people always have to have music on, TV on. They, they, they don't like to be alone in silence because they, they don't want to hear the voice of the enemy condemning them, bringing guilt, shame, loneliness to them. But this is the play where, where, where you learn to discern the voice of your father and the voice of the enemy. The voice of your father will speak to you with love. He will correct you with kindness, with gentleness. He will lead you to truth. He will encourage and edify you. That's the word of the, the voice of the Spirit. The voice of the enemy will condemn you. The voice of the enemy will bring shame, guilt, tell you you don't know worth anything. You are not loved by God. You're not accepted by God. You're a hypocrite. You're not good enough. How are you going to testify others about Jesus? Look at your life. Look what you've done. Look what you did. Look how you treated a person. And the enemy will keep you in a desert of depression, of loneliness, of isolation. Never fulfilling God's purpose for your life. But Jesus did not obey or believe the words of the devil. He believed the words of his father. You must believe the word of the spirit to your heart that says you are his. You're beloved. You're chosen. You're his son. You're his daughter. Nothing and no one will ever be able to separate you from his love. Listen to the words of truth and you will walk in victory. Jesus was, if Jesus would have listened to the devil, he would have stayed in that desert. He might have died in that desert. But Jesus was led by the Spirit, not only in the desert, but He was led by the Spirit out of the desert. And when He was led out of the desert, the Bible says He came out in the power of the Holy Spirit. And He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Not only the Spirit is within me, but now the Spirit has come upon me. Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, not within you. When you get saved, the Spirit comes within you. The same Spirit that came upon Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that's within you. Do you know the treasure that you have inside of you? Spirit of wisdom, knowledge, truth, understanding, the spirit of the living God, God Himself dwelling in all His fullness within you. But you must have first not only the spirit within you, but the spirit in front of you. 
which means you follow him. Many people come to church, they get filled with the Spirit, they go out the door, and the Spirit goes this way, and they go that way. Set the Lord before you. Constantly. Constantly. Set the Lord before you. Follow Him. And as you do, He will come upon you. You will not have power when the Spirit is within you. You will not have power when the Spirit is in front of you. But as you follow Him, He will come upon you. And when He comes upon you, it's because you're following His ways, His will, to fulfill on this earth His purposes. And you will see the manifestation of His power through your life. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will cast out demons. You will have victory over sin and temptation. The Bible says walk in the spirit. And you will not satisfy the desires of your flesh. See, the desires of the flesh war against the desires of the spirit. If you don't walk in the spirit, you will constantly give yourself away to the desires of your flesh. The secret is to walk in the spirit Jesus stood up and told us the purpose there's a purpose for his power there's purpose he said he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted proclaim liberty to the captives recovery of sight to the blind set a liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord gives you this power for you number one to be a witness of Jesus he's called every one of us not just an evangelist every one of us to testify of Jesus to others and when you do it under the power of the Spirit the Spirit brings conviction brings revelation to people's hearts it's the power of the Spirit what heals the brokenhearted Whew. many times we talk about physical miracles because they're the more visible ones but there's greater miracles than physical miracles, which are emotional miracles. We cannot see them with our eyes. But it's when the power of the Spirit heals a broken heart. There's no doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist who can heal the broken heart. Oh, but I've seen it. I was ministering in Austin, the capital of Texas. We were having a wonderful service at the church. And at the end, I was praying one by one for all the people. And this girl comes up to the front and she's crying, crying. I said, why are you crying? She said, I don't want to live anymore. I was abused. And she pulled up her sleeves and she had scars where she had cut herself trying to commit suicide. She cut her own wrists because of the pain in her heart. She didn't want to live anymore. And I said to her, Jesus wants to heal your heart. But first you need to forgive your father. Are you willing to forgive your father? She said yes. When she said yes, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon her. She fell on the floor and started weeping and weeping and weeping. We kept praying for hours. The service was over and I was walking out of the church with the pastor. And I look around, turn around and I look. And the girl still at the altar weeping under the power of the Holy Spirit. I left and I was driving home like three hours away from Austin to Houston. And the pastor called me on the phone. And he said, Andres, you won't believe what happened. When that girl got up from the floor, her face changed. She was full of joy. Her heart was restored. She looked different. But when she went home and she went to change to go to bed, she looked at her wrist and the scars had disappeared from her arms. See, we clap because of the scars disappearing because it's visible. But who cares about physical scars when God heals hearts? That, that's the biggest miracle. That was just to testify, to show you what God did inside. He showed you a sign on the physical world for you to see what God did in the emotional world. But God can restore joy into your heart. God can deliver you from fear, from depression, from anger, from bitterness. Only the Holy Spirit and His power can do that. To bring deliverance to the oppressed. And I'm not going to stay here long because I could be here all night 
telling testimony after testimony after testimony of how God sets the captives free. And it's the anointing what breaks the yoke of bondage. It's the anointing what breaks the curse. It's the anointing what causes demons to flee. Jesus said, if I cast out demons by you, the Spirit of God, then you'll know that the kingdom of God has come upon you. There's no demon who could stand in the presence of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> demons will flee your home if the power of the Spirit is there. You walk down the street and demons will flee before you. They don't even want to get close to you. Yesterday they brought this young man up and, and, and he was being tormented and he would just cover himself like this. He couldn't even look. The demon was like, he couldn't even look and he would just back away. There's, you shouldn't be afraid of demons. Demons are afraid of you. It's the power of the Spirit upon you. And to heal the sick. It's the power of the Holy Spirit who heals the sick. I cannot heal anybody. Pastor David cannot heal anybody. There's no men or women who can heal the sick. There are no healers. The ones who heal is the Spirit of Christ living inside of you. When you lay hands on the sick, it's not your hand that heals the sick. It's not a handkerchief that heals the sick. It's the power of the Holy Spirit who resides inside of you. It's the power that raised Jesus from the dead abides inside of you. The Bible says that Jesus, after making this declaration in Nazareth, he began to go throughout Galilee. And the Bible says he entered this town and everybody sought to touch him. People didn't have to ask him, talk to him. All they had to do is touch him. And as, as the moment they touched Jesus, you know what happened? Power went out from him and healed them all. Every single person in this town that touched Jesus every single one of them was healed all of them that shows to me the will of God that shows to me the heart of God the compassion of God I can imagine even sinners were touching him and they were getting healed Gentiles were probably touching him and were getting healed Jews were touching him and were getting healed whoever touched Jesus in this town was healed Blind people were in, their eyes were being opened. Deaf people would touch him and their eyes would open. People with cancer would touch him and those tumors would disappear. The lame would walk. This power had knowledge and understanding of the need of every single person. Because it's not just the power. It's God. It's the Spirit of God who has a will and He knows the specific need of every single person of us but Jesus went to another town and everyone was touching him but there was no power no miracles same Jesus in one town everybody touches him everybody gets healed Jesus goes to another town everybody touches him nobody gets healed people in that town could have said oh Jesus has changed he's not the same and there's many people who think like that today because they don't see miracles they think people has that Jesus has changed they think Jesus healed 2,000 years ago but he doesn't heal anymore it's not true because the Bible says he's the same yesterday today and forever he doesn't change the ones who change is us people could have said oh Jesus loves that town more than this town all kinds of excuses they could have made but the Bible says there's a woman who had been suffering for 12 years. She spent all her money on doctors. And because of her sickness, her disease, she grew weary and tired and weak. She had lost all her finances because sickness not only affects your body, it affects your finances. You cannot work anymore. You have to spend your money on doctors. She has spent all she had in doctors. And instead of getting better, the Bible says she grew worse. We believe in medicine. My dad is a doctor. Medicine is good. You should go to the doctor. God placed doctors to help us. But doctors are limited. There's many things that doctors cannot help you with. That medicine, sometimes the side effects are worse than what you're trying to treat. The Bible says that this woman was weak, rejected because of her sickness, because of her disease. 
left to die. And she could see Jesus walking through her town. She could see everybody touching Jesus and she did not see one miracle. She did not see one person get healed. But the Bible says she heard about Jesus. Faith does not come by seeing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. She heard. What did she hear? Everyone who touched Jesus in that town was healed. And she chose to believe what she heard instead of what she saw. That's a choice that you must make. Are you going to choose to believe what you see with your eyes or what is written on His Word? Are you going to choose to be led by what you feel in your emotions or by what Jesus said in His Word? Are you going to believe what the doctors say is incurable or are you going to believe what His Word says that with God all things are possible? Are you going to believe that Jesus changed, He doesn't heal anymore? Or are you going to believe that He's the same yesterday, today and forever? Are you going to believe that His power is limited? to certain people or are you going to believe that his will is to heal everyone who touches him this woman said I'm going to believe what I heard and she pressed through the crowd she went straight to Jesus and we know the story she touched Jesus and when she touched him power went out from him and she was immediately healed she did not say oh if I feel something I'm going to go touch Jesus. Oh, if he calls me, I'm going to go talk to Jesus. Oh, if he asks me, I'm going to tell him what my need is. She didn't feel anything. She acted upon her faith. She acted upon her confession because she said, she confessed with her mouth, if I touch Jesus, I will be healed. You confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart, not what you see with your eyes. And the power of life and death is in your tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit, the Bible says. You can confess your emotions. You can confess the lies of the enemies over your life. You can confess what the enemy tells you. You can confess what this world tells you. You can confess what you see with your natural eyes. Or you can confess what you believe in your heart. What is written in his word you can live by your emotions you can live by your sight or you can live by faith jesus stopped he was on an important mission but the faith of one woman made him stop because if there's something that pleases god is when people believe him what what he said and not what they see this world will call you crazy Jesus will call you awesome he's pleased by faith religious people are not gonna like it he's gonna tell you oh you're giving false hope no we're giving true hope in the Son of God in his word this woman made Jesus stopped and Jesus said somebody touched me Peter told him, Lord, everybody's touching you. He said, no, 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 somebody touched me in a different way. Because I felt, not only the woman felt, but Jesus also feels when someone touches him with faith. He felt virtue come out from him. And the Bible says this woman fell at his feet and confessed everything to him. And Jesus looked at her and told her three things, and with this I finished three things that tonight you can only receive through faith not something that you can earn not something that you can pay with money three things that you can only receive through faith three things that have been paid by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that there are gifts from God to those who believe first thing he said to her was daughter the greatest miracle you can receive is for Jesus to call you his daughter for Jesus to call you his son the Bible says to as many as received him to those who believe in his name he gave them the right the authority the power to be called sons and daughters of God this woman did not just receive a physical healing she received her salvation the Bible says 
that the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised them from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation the miracle of salvation works the same way as the miracle of healing you didn't see Jesus being crucified you didn't see him being raised from the dead you weren't there in Jerusalem that day but what happened you heard you heard that he was wounded for your transgressions you heard that he was bruised for your iniquities you heard that he was chastised so that you may have peace you heard that by his stripes you were healed you heard that God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that if you believe in him you will not perish but you will have eternal life you heard and what happened you believed it in your heart you believe it you believe that he not only died, but you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, that he's alive. And then what happens? You confess with your mouth that Jesus is my Lord. And you receive the greatest of all miracles. You become a daughter and a son of the living God. Jesus said to her, your faith has healed you. Your faith has healed you. Through faith, she received her healing, the Bible says. And then he says to her, go in peace. Go in peace. This woman did not have peace for 12 years. And one touch of Jesus, she received peace. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction tonight you can receive the greatest miracle which is to be called the son and a daughter of god you can be filled with his spirit who gives testimony to your heart that you're his beloved son and beloved daughter tonight by his stripes you can receive the miracles of healing as a free gift Jesus for 12 years, I mean the devil for 12 years had whooped this woman with poverty, with sickness, with disease, with rejection. And Jesus got in the way and said, whoop me, I'll pay the price for her healing. And she was made whole. And you can receive tonight peace, peace. Sometimes you go out there in the world and it's so chaotic so many troubles so many so much stress so many pressures so many responsibilities so many things that this world demands from you people around you work family but jesus wants to give you peace in the midst of it all it's a peace that surpasses your understanding that protects your mind that protects your heart the bible says that he was punished chastised so that we may receive the gift of peace you can leave this place tonight knowing that you have peace in your soul peace I leave with you Jesus says to you tonight my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid so many things that bring fear worry anxiety into our lives and Jesus says to you, let not your heart be troubled. Let it not be afraid. I'm going to give you my peace. The peace of Jesus was so great that he could sleep in the middle of a storm. So great was the peace in his man's heart. That's the peace that he wants to give to you. That peace comes from the Holy Spirit. I'm going to invite us all to stand to our feet. You know, when a couple years before I go before the, the pandemic, my daughter came to me and said, Dad, I want to be baptized. I want to be baptized. Oh man, there's no greater joy in a father's heart 
than when his son or daughter tells them, I want to follow Jesus' example. There's no greater joy. Oh, that brings more joy than them getting a college degree, them being a doctor or lawyer or whatever. Those are temporary, moment, momentary things, but when your daughter or your son makes a decision to follow Jesus, man, that's the greatest joy. So I said to her, you know, we're going to um, Israel to film. We go to Israel to film TV series from the, from the promised land, and we go and say, well, next time we go, I'm going to baptize you in the Jordan River. So the first time I went to the Jordan River, I said, I'm going to baptize all my children right here where Jesus was baptized. And I'm going to baptize them right here because my desire is for heaven to open over their lives. For their lives to be influenced by heaven. For them to know who they are in Christ. To have no doubt in their lives. For them to live lives led by the Spirit of God. So we went to the Jordan River with my daughter. It's one of the most beautiful experiences of my life. Right there in the Jordan River, I baptized my, my daughter in water for repentance of her sins. And I baptized her with water. The one who baptizes you with water is a pastor or it could be a leader in the church. But then a few days later, we went to Jerusalem. And we went to a Messianic Jewish congregation. These are Jews who believe that Jesus is the Christ. They're Christian Jews. They're still Jews that just believe that Jesus is the Messiah. He's their Savior too. And we're sitting in the pews with my daughter sitting next to me. And they began to sing this worship song called Ruach, which means spirit in Hebrew. And as they began to sing Ruach and Ruach, suddenly the heavens open. And right there in my arms, my daughter began to speak in other tongues. Jesus baptized her with the Holy Spirit. See, a man can baptize you in water, but only Jesus can baptize you in the Holy Spirit. So she was baptized in water in the Jordan. She was baptized in the Spirit in Jerusalem. And this was her trip. Then we went to Nazareth to a crusade. And the pastor who was conducting the crusade, we met with him afterwards. And he prophesied over my daughter her calling in life. She received her calling. So what happens? The Spirit will reveal to you what your calling is. Will lead you. Will reveal His purpose for your life. He will empower you to fulfill that calling. Every eye closed for a moment. The word is near you, it's in your mouth, it's in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Today, if you want to say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sin on the cross. Say, Jesus, I'm willing to repent for my sins and place my trust in you and on your sacrifice. I want to receive your spirit. I want to receive the greatest miracle. I want to know that I am your son, that I'm your daughter, that I am accepted and beloved by you. Right there where you are, I'm going to invite you just to lift both hands as high as you can. Just lift up both hands as high as you can. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. With your hands uplifted, pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Jesus, I believe that you died for my sin on the cross. Jesus, I believe that you were raised from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. Say, Lord, I repent for my sins. Now I want to invite everyone just to close your eyes and just lift up your hands to Him as high as you can. I'm going to invite the worship team to come to the front. With your hands uplifted, say, Jesus, open the heavens upon my life. 
If there's a specific sin that you need to confess to the Lord, confess your sins to Him and He's faithful. He's just to forgive you of all of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Let's sing the song, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place.
gates of hell to close, to close beneath your feet, to close from your family, from your children, from your generations. Shut the gates of hell and you desire for the gates of heaven to be opened upon your life and your children and your generations and you want God's favor, grace, blessing, love, power and peace and healing to flow into your home, into your life, into your family. You want to welcome the Holy Spirit of Christ into your life. As we sing this song once again, I want to ask you to take a step of faith and not stay where you're sitting or standing, but come up to this altar. Come out of your seats and come up to this altar. Come, come as we sing it once again. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, I desire you. I desire your presence. I want to be led. I want to be empowered by you, Holy Spirit. I want to know you. I want to have an intimate relationship with you.
listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. Listen to His voice tonight. Remove all fear, all anxiety. Take away all guilt and shame, condemnation. And hear His voice saying to you, you are His. You are His. You belong to Him. You've been bought with the price. You've been bought with blood. You're beloved. You're loved by your Heavenly Father. You're loved. You're accepted. You're holy. You're righteous. Listen to His voice tell you, you are my son. You are my daughter. Jesus is baptizing with the Holy Spirit tonight. He's baptizing with the Holy Spirit. You who chose to repent of your sins. You who chose to turn away from sin. Jesus is baptizing with His Spirit tonight. Jesus, what you see here tonight is Jesus baptizing His Son with His Holy Spirit and with fire and fire and fire and fire purifying, purifying, sanctifying fire, fire, fire Oh, is it baptism He's submerging you He's submerging you promises yes he has a hope yes he has a future for you yes yes he does
same Jesus that walked in Galilee is walking right in front of you. And his word says that as many as touched him were healed. He promised in his word where two or three are gathering his name. He's right here. He's right here. Say, what do I have to do? Touch him. All you have to do is touch him. You don't have to touch me. You have to touch Jesus with your faith tonight. If you need healing for your body, come up to the front. Come up to the front if you need healing for your body. Come up to the front and close your eyes. For you are great and you do miracles so great. For you are great and you do miracles so great. You deserve glory. If you need healing, this is the moment to touch Jesus. This is the moment to touch Him. This is the moment to be healed. This is the moment. This is the moment. This is the moment. He's walking by. Don't miss him. Don't miss him. Don't just watch him. Don't just hear him. Touch him with your faith. And his power will touch you.
there's a tumor in your body, place a hand where that tumor is in your body right now. I command that tumor to disappear right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke every tumor, every growth in the name of Jesus. This is the moment. Touch him with your faith. Touch him with your faith. You have problems in your eyesight. Cataracts, blindness, nearsighted, farsighted. Place a hand over your eyes tonight. Take off your glasses and place a hand over your eyes if you believe. In the name of Jesus, I command blind eyes to be opened. Eyesight to be healed. I rebuke the spirit of blindness. That's it, that's it, that's it. Just place your hand over your eyes. If you believe Jesus can heal your eyesight, place your hands over your eyes and be healed and be healed tonight. If you have problems with your hearing, place a hand over your ears right now. In the name of Jesus, I command deaf ears to be opened right now. Be open, deaf ears to be opened right now. In the name of Jesus, there it is, there it is, there it is. If there's pain somewhere in your body, in your bones, in your shoulders, in your knees, place a hand where the pain is right now. In the name of Jesus, receive healing for your knees. Receive healing for your back. Receive healing for your shoulder right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. That's it. He's healing your knee right now. He's healing your spinal cord right now. All arthritis is leaving your body right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you have respiratory problems, maybe because of symptoms of COVID in the past, problems in your lungs, asthma, bronchitis, place a hand over your chest. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal, heal right now every respiratory problem. Heal the lungs. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke asthma. Be healed in the name of Jesus. All you have to do is believe, is believe, is believe. And you will be healed. Skin conditions, be healed. We have heart problems, high blood pressure or blood problems, diabetes. Place a hand over your heart and be healed right now of every heart condition, of every issue with your blood. I rebuke AIDS in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it. I rebuke every virus. I rebuke COVID from your body in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every infectious disease, every bacterial disease to be healed from your stomach in the name of Jesus. Every digestive issue to be healed now in the name of Jesus. If you want Jesus to give you his peace and take away the fear and anxiety, place a hand over your head right now. Jesus says to you, my peace, my peace, I give unto you. Not as the world gives it. You won't find this peace in this world. You won't find it. No matter where you go, no matter what country you travel to, no matter how much money you have or wherever you may be, you won't find this peace. This world cannot give you peace. Jesus says to you, my peace I give unto you. And he says to you, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. All fear dissipates from your heart. And he gives you his confidence. He gives you his assurance. He gives you his love. And he gives you his peace beyond your understanding he will protect your mind your heart and your emotions
there's a specific need in your life, Jesus says to you tonight, ask and you shall receive. There's a specific healing that you need. I might not have named it, but I want you to place a hand where that need is and lift the other hand to Jesus and ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door of heaven will be opened unto you tonight. supply every need according to the riches the riches of your glory in Christ Jesus tonight heal every single sickness every single disease remove every single pain supply every financial need supply every need in every family save entire families of children their children and their grandchildren shall serve the Lord. Jesus, every need, every need according to your riches tonight. That's it, that's it. Many are being healed. Ooh, many are being healed. If you felt the healing touch from Jesus tonight, you felt his power touch you, and heal you. I want you to lift up a hand right there where you are. Just lift up a hand. If you felt his power touch you and heal you, God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you felt his power touch you and heal you, check your eyes, check your ears, check your legs, check your shoulder. God bless you. Anybody else who felt the healing touch or delivering touch from Jesus? Back there, that ears opened in the name of Jesus. Another one over there. Anybody else who received the healing touch, check to see where that tumor is. You're going to see that the tumor has disappeared from your body. Check, check your body. There's another one being touched over there on the floor. She's being healed right now in the name of Jesus. She's being healed in the name of Jesus. She's being healed in the name of Jesus. Check, check your ears, check your eyes, check where the pain is. Begin to move your legs, your knees, your shoulders. You're going to find that all the pain, all the pain has left your body. I'm going to ask all of you who lifted up your hand. You said, I felt the healing touch. Only those people to come to the front, okay? The people who lifted up your hand, come up to the front. The rest of you, I'm going to invite you to go to your seats. If the Lord has touched you tonight, I want you to come and stand up here in the front. Make a line right here in the front. Everyone who was touched tonight, yes. Yes. Something come happened. and now I know he touched he touched me and made me whole. Yes, he touched me. her and oh, he touched her he touched something something happens happened and now I know he touched you you come and stand up here in the front don't stay on your seat
sexual cause. But maybe yoke of wickedness. I have been set free. God has given me peace finally. I want to thank God. God, I thank you. I thank you. What did you feel when he touched you? I feel the leave. I felt that leave. I felt that evil connection leave my system. I felt myself free from my free captivity. I said, I felt it so free. God, I thank you. Jehovah, I see. I thank you, Baba. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You feel totally free. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank Whom the Son sets free yes, is free indeed. Lift up your hands and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill your daughters, whom you love, with your Holy Spirit and power. Look at the gratitude in her face. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. set him free as he walked in Galilee. This is what they did. You say, Jesus, thank you. You don't know what it is to be tormented, to be oppressed, and there's no solution in this world. But when you come to Jesus, this is what he does. He sets you your name? Benjamin. Benjamin. Tell me what happened tonight. I felt the presence of God. You felt the presence of God. What was your problem? Well, I've been trying to discover who I am in Christ. You're trying to discover your identity. Yes. And you felt his presence. Yes. And what did Jesus tell you today? Who are you? I'm a pastor. You're a pastor? Yes. That's wonderful. Benjamin. Gonna shepherd his sheep. Close your eyes. And he says to you, Benjamin, you are my beloved son, and I am pleased with you. Feed my sheep. What happened tonight? I can't see from far. Time I come to church, I put on glasses. But today I can see for far. <laughs> so before you couldn't see from far away. Yes, sir. And yes. now, and now you can see perfectly. Yes, sir. What did you feel when Jesus touched your eyes? I feel that something left my eye. Something like a sharp object left my eye. And I open my eye and I can see. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Close your eyes and lift up your hands. You're his beloved daughter. And he's pleased with you. He's not only opening the eyes, your physical eyes. He's also opening the eyes of your heart to see the beauty of his face be filled with the Holy Spirit what is your name sir Modestus is my name 
what happened to Mary? Um, I, as I was coming to church, I was having a stomach ache pain here for some time now. At the time, I couldn't even I would be able to sit down. I would have to lie down for it to subside and all that. But as I walked into the service, while you are ministering, the pain left. Just the pain completely left. left. Squeeze it. Squeeze. No pain. No pain. Do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Just close your eyes and lift up your hands. Thank you, Jesus, for touching your son. He loves you. He's pleased with you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Ooh, touch. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes. Let me see. Bring her here. Yes. There is he. What is your name? My name is Faith. Faith. What a beautiful name. It's a prophetic name because you're a woman of faith. What happened tonight? I felt like something heavy left me. Recently, I've been having the spirit of fear. I have dreams and goals that I want to do, of which one of them is visiting, visiting people in the hospital and praying for them. And I also discovered that anything I do, not that I don't work hard, I work hard, but I can't see the results of my hard work. I've been thinking about it lately and I started asking God questions. But as I came out, I even told my younger sister to come out while I stay with her daughter. She should stand on behalf of her family. But I, the Holy Spirit kept prompting me to come out. So as I came out, I made mention of the spirit of fear. I felt something heavy left me. And I had peace as if they poured me cold water. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. And I felt some vibration all over my body. I know that I have been delivered. And my family is set free from every financial cheap. <laughs> Lift up your hands, Faith. You're totally free in Jesus' name. No more fear. And doors will be opened and everything your hands touch will be blessed. Because the windows of heaven have been opened upon your life tonight. And every door of hell has been shut. Touch! Jesus. for some time now so I came with severe abdominal pains but as I came up for the altar call I felt relieved the pain has gone all the pain is gone let me see squeeze it yeah. there's no more pain no. what were you diagnosed with fibroid Fri fibroids yes. inside and now you touch him and there's no more pain there did you feel something when Jesus touched you? What did you feel? I felt, I felt relief and my, my body was always jerking. My body was shaking. I felt something leave me. You feel something leave you? Yes, sir. That was all the oppression. Close your eyes and lift up your hands. You're His beloved and He's pleased with you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive His peace. <sighs> Battling with um, low self-esteem and um, 
also um, my eye will um, have um, cross eye. So firstly, um, why we're praying, I, I, I got a word from you which says I'm, I'm his daughter. And that really makes me feel very important. Like I'd be having, I can't stand, I, at times I look at myself that I've been battling with my identity of who I am. But today I know that, I know who I am. That's the greatest of all miracles. This is greater than the blind seeing death here. When you know who you are, you are know you're his daughter. You know you're his son. And what happened in your eyes? Uh, okay. Um, so why I was we, you said we should lay our hands on our head for um, healing. I like my I have a cross eye, which at times is mostly embarrassing because sometimes when I speak to people, they always look back at thinking I'm thinking talking to someone else. So, um, I felt the spirit came upon me and my eyes, have, it has been restored back. It's normal. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Close your eyes. Jesus says to you, close your eyes. You are my beloved daughter and I am pleased with you. Touch. Touch Jesus. Yes bring her up. Yes, come. Come. Yes. What is your name? My name is Treasure. Treasure. What happened tonight? Well, several times I've been diagnosed of acute bronchitis. And I came in here tonight with my nose blocked and I was having chest pains. I was sweating profusely. And um, actually came out here for, I, I wanted to be filled with the spirit afresh. And while I was praying, you mentioned it and I started praying. I also had, um, I don't know, this pain with my second finger. It wasn't, I couldn't bend it. It was so painful. I didn't know when it started, but it's been on for weeks now, for weeks. And while I was praying, I don't know, I just felt this very small um, breeze on me. And I felt a nudge in my spirit to check. So first of all, it was my, my nostrils. It opened and I, I could breathe properly. And while I was just saying, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. I heard it again, check your finger. I checked, the pain was still there. But I started thanking God for the healing. And right then I bent it and I realized it could bend and I, I can't feel the pain anymore. The pain has disappeared. Open and close, open and you close. This is it. The pain has gone. Just yesterday I was sharing with someone, I don't know how it started, but it's been there for, for weeks. And right now I can actually bend my finger and I give God all the praise. And breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> You feel completely free. Yes, free. No free. more bronchitis. No, it's not there. Do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Close yes. your eyes and lift up your hands. Jesus says to you, you are my treasure. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's such a powerful anointing upon her life. God's going to use you to lay these hands on the sick and see them healed. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oof. Bring her, bring her here. Bring her here. <sighs> Touch! Oof. So much power upon her life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bring this young man here. Wow, so many beautiful testimonies. Bring him here. You know, I know some of us are a little shy to speak in public, you know? Believe me. I did not want to be a preacher you know the last thing I wanted to do is be here preaching we're a little bit shy because we don't like to talk in front of people actually that's one of people's biggest fears is to it's called public speaking you know but I'm here because I love Jesus amen so when you testify you say I'm gonna testify because I love Jesus I'm gonna give him the glory and the honor why why do we testify? Because faith comes by hearing. 
So there might be somebody sitting here with the same need that you have. And when they hear what God did for you, they're going to believe God will do it for them too. See, your words, just like this woman heard about Jesus, when people hear about what God did in your life, they're going to say, I'm going to believe for the same miracle for me. So God uses your testimony to defeat the devil, the Bible says. Amen? So don't be embarrassed. Amen? Speak up. Tell me, what is your name? My name is Godfrey. Godfrey, what happened tonight? Okay, so you asked um, that you should come out for the baptism of the Spirit. But the first thing I felt was um, the liquid love of God. Like, it's as if a burden was removed because I've been hurt and I've been begging God that let him, like, fill my heart with his love and let it flow to people without hindrance and all. And also I've been trusting God for my eyes for for so long for my eyes and my right ear is a partial okay deafness. those of you moving please stop just give us five minutes we'll close i know you are the partial sorry. deafness in my right ear and when you asked when you prayed for short-sightedness i the, i placed my hand and i felt um heat i felt heat and it became clearer it became clearer a little and uh, the Holy Spirit told me before that the opening of my eyes and ears would be like a spiritual thing, a spiritual sign, and I've been trusting God for me. But I felt heat and the eyes became clearer. And little... what about your ear? Can you hear now? Let me test it's it. You. Cover that ear. It's a partial... Oh, partial deafness on this one. It, it has not been completely. Okay, listen to me. Say Jesus. Jesus. I love you. I love you. Jesus. Jesus. I trust you. I trust you. Open my ears. Jesus. Jesus. I believe. Yes. You can heal me. Right now. Open my ear. Jesus. I love you. Jesus. I love you. Jesus. Feel me with your Holy Spirit and your love. Use him for your glory, Father. Let's all stand up to our feet. Let's all stand up to our feet. I want to take a couple more testimonies. Why is this important? Because we're going to do a video. It will and then be I tomorrow. want to show what God is doing here in Nigeria. It will be tomorrow morning so that they can get to their destination because some of them are leaving. Okay. But uh, you'll be here in the morning as well as... I'll you. be in the afternoon, in the night, I think. Make sure that you come early so you can be inside because there will be a lot of people here if you don't come early you'll be among those sitting outside and so on but this service continues uh, tomorrow evening we're going to have a conclusion in the evening of tomorrow okay pastor Robert, god bless you sir thank you come on you know. Hallelujah. Please, let's give our offerings. Father, we thank you for the offerings. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Please give your offering. Can you give the offering? You can also give to the account on the screen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, ushers, just quickly. Ushers, quickly. Can you pass the basket? Hallelujah. Ushers, quickly, quickly, can you pass the baskets around? Remember, tomorrow morning service holds here in this facility. Amen. So come in early. So that I can be able to get a seat inside. Come in early so that you can be able to get a seat inside. And um, it's going to be a super Sunday service. Praise the Lord. And uh, it's going to be 
is a combined service for all Domino City in Lagos. So tell everybody, it's holding here. Prayer begins 7.30. And if I'm you, I'll be here by 7 to be able to come in. Prayer begins by 7.30. So all functionaries, music ministers, ushers,